tonight, questions of leadership, calls for change on both sides of the border. Six more years. Justin Trudeau under pressure. It is problematic for the party and for the prime minister. One of his own MPs says it's time for a change at the top. President Biden and the panic for Democrats after a disastrous debate. I don't walk as easy as I used to. I don't speak as smoothly as I used to. Also, a high-tech rescue of a hiker stranded in B.C. This guy had called in at 6.30 this morning on a cell phone that had 1% battery. Plus, new research on multivitamins and where they fall short. Getting your vitamins from pills is not going to make you live longer. And fit for the king. Paying a high price to walk in Elvis Presley's shoes. CTV National News with Heather Butts. Good evening. We begin with breaking news that could lead to delays and disruptions for thousands of travelers this long weekend. A day after being ordered into binding arbitration, mechanics with WestJet have walked off the job. The airline says it's, quote, extremely outraged by this action. In a statement, WestJet's president says given arbitration has been ordered, a strike has no leverage on the arbitration's outcome, so it is pure retaliation of a disappointed union. In a release issued late tonight, the union representing aircraft maintenance engineers and other technical employees says the airline's unwillingness to negotiate made the strike inevitable. WestJet has noted severe travel disruptions are to be expected if the strike is not called off immediately. The prime minister is facing increased pressure tonight, a new call for him to resign from one of his own MPs. CTV News has obtained an email from Wayne Long asking the Liberal caucus to support a push for Trudeau to step down as party leader. CTV's Jeremy Charant has more. Fresh calls tonight for a shakeup at the top of the Liberal Party now coming from a sitting Liberal MP. In a note to Federal Caucus obtained by CTV News, New Brunswick MP Wayne Long says, for the future of our party and for the good of our country, we need new leadership and a new direction. Adding the voters have spoken loud and clear, they want change, I agree. He may be at the point where he realizes that all of his attempts, all of the ideas, all of the innovations, he and his team have been able to put together have not really moved the needle. And so the question becomes, could a new leader uh, accomplish a reset? Even prominent liberal loyalists have now joined a growing chorus calling for Justin Trudeau to step aside. This morning, former cabinet minister Catherine McKenna said the prime minister has a legacy to be proud of, but it's time for new ideas, new energy and a new leader. For her to come out and make this statement, again, just kind of contributes to a sense that there are problems around his leadership and that people who have been devoted to the party and who care about, you know, who clearly want the Liberals to do well in the next election are saying, listen, you, you need to step aside. The political pressure has only piled on in the days since the shocking Toronto by-election defeat this week. Still, most MPs have publicly stood by their leader. The Prime Minister has led us through three very successful elections, and of course I support him. Trudeau has so far stood firm against stepping down, insisting he will be the one to lead his party into the next election against Pierre Polyev. Heather? All right, Jeremy, thanks. For more on this, let's bring in CTV's senior political correspondent, Mike LeCouture. Mike, we now have a former Trudeau cabinet minister and one of his current MPs on the record. Should we expect more? Well, the Prime Minister certainly has to stop this before it starts to snowball. It may be this summer, but that could end up happening. Here's the issue. Now that you have these two on the record, what will happen as this crucial summer barbecue circuit starts? We know that MPs are going to be in their ridings. What will they be doing? They need to be selling their party to all of their constituents. But instead, are they going to be there selling out the Prime Minister? That is something that the team needs to sort of figure out right now. And when I mean the team, the Prime Minister's office. Are they going to be reaching out to different MPs to really sort of canvas them and see where they are? Does the Prime Minister need to call some sort of summer caucus to rally the troops. Questions he will need to answer over the next few days, if not weeks. 
And Mike, how high does that pressure have to get for Justin Trudeau to even consider stepping down? Yeah, he's been on the record, Heather, so many times recently saying he's going to be the one leading this party into the next election. He wants to make sure he takes that fight to Pierre Polyev. But if it continues to get this high, where you have more MPs come out, more of them call for a leadership change, then he may not have that choice. I think going through the summer, it will be interesting to see how many more come out if they do, or whether or not everybody else sort of goes to ground at this point and goes a little quiet. I think that will be telling as well, but he may not be able to get past the fall if that pressure continues to mount, Heather, because then it'll be clear as everyone comes back to Parliament Hill that they don't want him there and that maybe it would be that time for him to go. CTV's Mike LeCouture in Ottawa. And there are also calls tonight for a leadership shakeup south of the border. Last night's presidential debate has left many Democrats concerned that President Joe Biden is not their best chance to defeat Donald Trump. Tonight, the New York Times editorial board is urging Biden to exit the race, saying the greatest public service Mr. Biden can now perform is to announce that he will not continue to run for re-election. Here's CTV's Joy Malbin with reaction to what was a critical debate. In North Carolina, President Joe Biden greeted by supporters and brushing off concerns about his debate performance. I know I'm not a young man. <laughs> State the obvious. I don't walk as easy as I used to. I don't speak as smoothly as I used to. I don't deb debate as well as I used to. But I know what I do know. I know how to tell the truth. Biden had hoped to build fresh momentum for his re-election, but set off alarm bells after a shaky performance, losing his train of thought. I, I, eligible for what I've been able to do with the uh, with, with, with the COVID, excuse me, with um, dealing with everything we have to do with. Uh, look, if we finally beat Medicare. Thank you, President uh, Biden, President Trump. Well, he's right. He did beat Medicare. He beat it to death, and he's destroying Medicare. After a week of debate prep, Biden struggled with his lines, his voice raspy. His campaign said he had a cold, but the split screen was not kind. There were character attacks, and yes, they went there. How many billions of dollars do you owe in civil penalties for, for molesting a woman in public, for doing a whole range of things, of having sex with a porn star? on the night while your wife was pregnant. I mean, what, what, what are you talking about? You, you have the morals of an alley cat. Give me a minute, sir. I didn't have sex with a porn star. But when he talks about a convicted felon, his son is a convicted felon. There were jabs and clashes on abortion, the economy and immigration, even their golf game. If I just won two club championships, not even senior, two regular club championships. To do that, you have to be quite smart and you have to be able to hit the ball a long way. Look, I'd be happy to have a driving contest with him. The reason I got my handicap, which when I was vice president, down to a six. And no fact-checking on Trump's misleading statements on his record, even deflecting questions about his role in the January 6th Capitol attack and criminal cases against him. But the headlines were brutal. Biden bombed a fumbling performance and a panicking party. I think he looked weak and confused. I like him. Uh, no way you could believe this man could be commander in chief for more years. I mean, this puts to shame anything you've seen in presidential debating history. Some Democrats even throwing out possible replacements like California's governor, Gavin Newsom. Trump. I'll never turn my back on Are you ready to Even the vice president rushing in to help with damage control. Listen, people can debate on style points, but ultimately this election and who is the president of the United States has to be about substance. Despite concerns from his own party and voters, Joe Biden says he has no intention of stepping aside, vowing to have another go at Donald Trump in a second debate this September. Heather? Joy Melvin in Atlanta. Canada is about to get a new leader of the armed forces. CTV News has learned Lieutenant General Jenny Cahania will be appointed the next chief of the defense staff, the first woman to hold the position. Cahania succeeds General Wayne Eyre, who will retire after 40 years in uniform. The Royal Canadian Navy revealed details of its new fleet under construction in Halifax. This fleet will defend Canada 
It will protect our national interest, and it will be there to support our allies. The Canadian surface combatant fleet will include 15 next-generation warships to replace the Royal Canadian Navy's destroyers and frigates. There is no final cost, but it will be higher than earlier estimates of roughly $60 billion. A remote-controlled rescue to tell you about tonight from North Vancouver. Stranded and soaked, a hiker spent days in the backcountry until a drone tracked him down. CTV's BC Bureau Chief Andrew Johnson tells us what happened next. A hiker lost in here, somewhere. His 911 call cut short. On a cell phone that had 1% battery. So it, it died right after the call. Rescuers only knew the man was stuck near Lynn Creek in North Vancouver, which stretches for kilometers, and he was in rough shape. When he crossed the creek sometime on Wednesday, he had lost his footwear. So he was barefoot, soaking wet, uh, and had no way of getting out. Rescue crews turned to tech, launching this drone equipped with a thermal camera that quickly detected the hiker's body heat. The drone made all the difference. It, it found the guy for us. Now, getting him out, a helicopter lowered two rescuers into the spot and they emerged with the man who spent two nights out in the elements. If we had not found him, uh, he, he would have been uh, in it would have been disastrous for him. The rescue is serving as a timely warning, not only in North Vancouver's popular hiking spots, but for anyone setting out to enjoy the outdoors this summer. A hike or backcountry camping trip can easily go sideways if you're not prepared. Experts say an injury is the most common mishap that requires search and rescue, followed by someone becoming lost or disoriented, or they push themselves too far. We all get excited to do these great adventures, but Spend a little bit of time thinking about those, what if I sprain my ankle, what if I get lost? Their advice, let people know where you're going and consider investing in a satellite communication device instead of relying on your smartphone. Batteries can die. We don't always have reception either. Fortunately, this guy did. An experienced crew and technology took it from there. Andrew Johnson, CTV News, Vancouver. The last-minute strike action by WestJet mechanics may cause significant travel issues ahead of the long weekend, but some Canadians were already rethinking where their time and dollars should go this summer. CTV's Adrian Gobriel tells us why. Luggage in tow many Canadians have carefully curated their summer plans. We're more aware, uh, more cautious of what we're booking and using points as much as possible, that type of thing. One of the main reasons, inflation and the cost of living. According to a new poll by Ipsos and CIBC, roughly 8 in 10 Canadians are making changes to their summer spending habits. Canadians are being cautious uh, from last year to this year, much more putting travel plans on hold. A separate survey by Deloitte found that of those traveling, 77% expect to have to spend more on travel this summer. 23% will be spending less due to the economic climate and 18% won't be going anywhere at all. A lot of Canadians are sensitive to price. And so uh, what we have been advising, you know, tourism businesses is that, you know, be careful in terms of how you're pricing your product and your services. Uh, the Canadians are looking for value. Though millions of Canadians will still be out having fun in the sun, the data shows many are planning summer trips closer to home. The majority of Canadians are going to stay in Canada for their vacations this summer, for their big vacation, like 80 percent. So that's uh, that's great for the Canadian economy and for the tourism industry. Many also added that their preference will be to support smaller independent local businesses and restaurants, with the majority saying they plan to spend their time in the great outdoors. When it comes to the final budget, Ipsos and CIBC found that 40% of Canadians say they plan to spend less than $2,000 each on travel this season, with many saying they plan to save money by visiting with friends and family. Sounds like a road trip well spent. Adrian Gobriel, CTV News, Toronto. Coming up, the potential perils of popular pills. They can actually be harmful to you if you're taking them in excess. New findings from a massive study on multivitamins. Plus, legendary footwear fetches six figures at auction.
me down, uh, step on my face, uh, slamming my name all over the place. Do anything that you want. Looking to live longer, millions of people turn to multivitamins. Despite their popularity, their benefits may not be what you think. A new study finds they may actually increase the risk of early death for some adults. CTV's Allison Bamford has the latest on this health habit. I definitely notice a difference when I don't take them. Instead of a multivitamin, Britt Sipola takes more than a handful of daily vitamin supplements, working with her medication and diet to make sure she gets the right amount of nutrients. If I'm not taking B12 myself in a high dose and I'm not customizing kind of all of the little pieces that I need, then I'm not going to be getting what I need because it's not one size fits all. One in three American adults take multivitamins in an effort to prevent disease. But new research published in the Journal of the American Medical Association found no evidence that multivitamins help people live longer and instead reported a 4% higher mortality risk in users. Because multiple vitamins just throw a whole bunch of vitamins together, there can be some that they can actually be harmful to you if you're taking them in excess. Dr. Neil Barnard, author of the study's commentary, says it's best to get your vitamins from food, like fruits and vegetables. And if necessary, a person should take supplements for the ones they do need. If B12 is the one you need, take that. If you can't get sunlight naturally, vitamin D in a pill makes sense. Supplemental vitamins are rising in popularity at this Regina supplement shop, many turning to vitamin B12 or omega-3 fatty acids when they aren't getting enough in their diets. People are starting to pay a lot more attention to their health um, and, you know, supplementations right alongside that. Experts say there's no need to get rid of the multivitamin altogether. There are benefits for some, particularly pregnant women and those with macular degeneration. Some evidence even suggests a reduced risk of dementia late in life. Allison Bamford, CTV News, Regina. After the break, Newfoundland's unknown soldier finally laid to rest. Canadians pay their respects ahead of a solemn ceremony. History will be made this weekend on the East Coast as Canadians pay tribute to Newfoundland's unknown soldier, now lying in state. This is the first chance for many to pay tribute to a soldier who went off to war and is only now making it back home. CTV's Garrett Barry has the story. Under the watchful eye of guards, the remains of an unknown Newfoundland soldier are home tonight, more than 100 years after he left his town and fought and died in battlefields in northeastern France. Today, he was brought to the Confederation Building to lie in state where he was visited by a line of mourners who came to pay their respects. The casket represents all of Newfoundland and Labrador's First World War effort. 1,700 died in the First World War, 800 of those buried in unmarked graves. He was killed in France, he doesn't know a grave, and I carry the same first name as him. For Private Alexander Reed, a pallbearer, it's a personal job. It could very well be his own family member in that casket. Being able to do, be in the same unit as him, carry the same first name, do all this, it's something that I started to put into words. For the next three days, the casket will be watched by guards, like many others in this province, who have deep personal connections, relatives who fought in the war. He had a daughter he never came home to. He never ever met his daughter because his wife was pregnant when he left. Then after he went home, he uh, became a dental assistant under the, uh, the direction of Sir w uh, Wilfred Grenfell, and they worked with him. For the hundreds of Newfoundlanders and Labradorians who will visit over the next three days, this casket represents a lot. Not just a man who fought and died, but also the fate of the Dominion of Newfoundland, a tiny country that lost hundreds of young men, then eventually, years later, itself. Left us with a significant human impact, a significant emotional impact, but it also changed the trajectory of our country. He'll lie here for three days before being entombed in Newfoundland's National War Memorial on July 1st.
Gare Perry, CTV News, St. John's. We will have special coverage of the events in St. John's this weekend. The documentary for King and Country, Newfoundland Sacrifice, airs tomorrow at 7 p.m. on CTV. And Omar will be in St. John's for the live CTV News special, Newfoundland's Unknown Soldier, on July 1st at 8 a.m. Eastern. Well, an iconic rock relic has sold at auction for more than $200,000. The blue suede shoes Elvis wore on and off stage were bought by an American collector based in California. Elvis had gifted the shoes to a friend before he joined the army. Well, still ahead, breaking down the numbers. How the playoffs gave the Canadian economy an assist. Canada's Macklin Celebrini has been selected in the first pick at tonight's NHL draft. The San Jose Sharks are very proud to select from Boston University, <laughs> Macklin Celebrini. This wasn't a surprise. The 18-year-old became just the fourth freshman to be named college hockey's top player with 34 goals in 38 games this season. Well, this has been a big year for Canadian hockey teams and their fans. The sport proving to score big with the economy, also boosting the country's GDP. CTV's Kathy Lee on the financial power play. Two months of hockey heaven. Four Canadian teams in the NHL playoffs, Winnipeg, Toronto, Vancouver and Edmonton, reaping in the economic benefits. This has been a lot of fun and... You know, it's sad it's over. The NHL playoff run may be over, but New Stats Canada data is something to celebrate. The arts and entertainment sector rose almost 1% in April for the entire country. Spectator sports contributed the most to that growth. And the number coincides with Canadian teams qualifying for the NHL playoffs in that month. But we did see a lot of that momentum started to fade more so in May with sort of the advanced um, estimate for GDP was that it actually slowed to 0.1%. But will the slow rate continue and how long will it last? So are we going to be having a conversation in the fall of this year that GDP didn't rise as much as expected because people have to pay off the credit bills from the last couple of months. So it's a little bit of an illusion. Still, local economies enjoyed a boost even for a short time, notably Edmonton making it to Game 7 of the Cup Final, the city expecting to bring in more than $200 million. Yeah, I've been in the uh, hospitality industry for 34 years, and this is the busiest I've ever seen it. This also reflected in the Stats Canada data. The food services sector and accommodation sector both seeing a bump nationally. Kathy Lee, CTV News, Calgary. That is our newscast for this Friday night. I'm Heather Butts. For all of us at CTV National News, thank you for watching. Good night, and I'll see you again tomorrow.